Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We talked about this recently. The great guitar build-off is upon us. I am participating. It's official. I'll be in the Invitational and hopefully a lot of you guys are participating too. I realize, you know, some of you have been waiting for a reason to go ahead and do that guitar build. Some of you have been waiting for an opportunity to show off your skills. Now's the time. But for some of you, the holdup is the video, thinking you need a bunch of fancy equipment, a bunch of, you know, training or, or whatever. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how to do a video all on your phone. Now this is going to be somewhat interesting because I'm using a different camera, not an expensive one, just a GoPro actually, to make this part of the video. You guys are also going to see the video that I do with the phone um, and we're going to talk about how I do that. Before we continue though, Ben from Crimson Guitars, Ben Crow, just put out a really good video very recently about how to make a video. He put a lot of information in there, pretty much everything you could need. Framing, rule of thirds, your, you know, your ratios for your shutter speed, how ISO works, all of that stuff. If you really want kind of the full on, like half hour, here's what you need to know, check out his video. I'm giving you the Coles notes. This is the bare bones, what you actually need to know. Okay, so we're going to cover a couple important pieces. We're going to talk a little bit at the end about software for editing and stuff like that. And uh, for now, right now, we're just going to cover the logistics of making the video with your phone. Period. I'll show you how I do it. That's right. I've started making videos with my phone a little bit instead of my camera. Well, my other camera. Anyway, let's get to it. Just quickly before we fully jump in here to the tutorial, which is going to be weird because you're going to watch me on a camera talking into a different camera. Anyway, just quickly before we jump into that, um, this is not a sponsored video, but the guy who owns this shop and lets me use it on weekends, uh, who basically makes this channel possible, <laughs> it's not me, the guy who basically makes this channel possible uh, just wrote a book. And uh, he didn't ask me to do this, but I'm gonna show it to you and put a link in the description. It's a fantasy book, kind of a dystopian fiction. If anybody's interested in showing some support for him, he really helps me out. He doesn't know I'm doing this, and again, not sponsored. But yeah, just figured I'd point it out. Link in the description, it's called Stepping Into the Dawn. Uh, I'm gonna read it, so I can't really tell you what it's like yet, but I'm looking forward to it. All right, let's move on. All right, so if you've got a relatively new phone, they've got a couple different lenses. So, we sorry, I just got this thing. Anyway, uh, so you can use you know, your standard lens, your telephoto lens, or your wide angle lens. And normally you're gonna use your standard one. Your wide angle lens is gonna look a bit warped, but if you're filming yourself, well, I'll show you both. You can also use the self-facing lens. It's just not as awesome, I think. So you can uh, use the volume buttons to turn it on, especially if you're old like me and you're used to using a camera like this instead of like this. So I'm just gonna point it toward myself Turn it on, but I'm gonna, you'll notice, <clears throat> pardon me, you'll notice I've got a mic here. And because I'm in the shop, it's important for me to have one of these because sound is an important part of a video. It's what makes it easier to focus on. Probably the most important part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is snap a couple times. So when I go to edit this at the end, I have a little bit, well, I have a couple spikes in the sound wave that I can now line up. So I'm not trying to lip read. Lining up your sound is, is terribly difficult. I don't have a tripod right now. I'm just talking directly to the camera. You don't even have to film yourself. I'm looking back and forth. I'm driving myself nuts here. You don't actually have to film yourself when you're making your great guitar build off video. You can just film what you're doing if you want. But this part's kind of fun. So this is the normal lens. Let me quickly switch it to the wide angle lens. And this is the wide angle lens. And that's just me filming myself straight up. So I can talk about my project. In today's video, I'm pointing at a guitar. Uh, <laughs> and that, that, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You, you will want to change your angle occasionally. Sometimes having this handheld type footage is cool. But you don't always want to have handheld footage. My tripod is, is holding the other camera right now. But if you look here, let me put this away. If you look here, I've got... <laughs> Just this goofy little thing that holds my phone. And I'll show you guys how the B-roll looks coming out of this. But, uh, you know, these things are cheap. I'll put it, I have an audio and video and electronics 
thing in the Amazon link in the description. You can check that out. But you can load this onto a tripod. You can load this onto just this goofy little contraption that I have that's also super cheap. Put it on a table somewhere, right? Like, you don't need much to be able to film yourself. And it's good to have something to put it on because, like I said, you're going to want to change angles occasionally. So let's swap these out. I'm going to put this guy on the tripod, and we're going to continue most of this video now, with the exception of some B-roll, with this camera. All right? Pretty straightforward stuff. Filming with the phone camera now. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that YouTube viewers have the attention span of a goldfish, but you are probably going to want to change angles occasionally. If I spend 10 minutes in this position explaining my project and working on it, people are going to get bored. I know. I used to do it. Luckily, all it really takes is the occasional angle change to make things seem interesting, to make it seem like, you know, a normal discussion or like you've actually got something going on. So I can just move you over here and continue what I was saying. Not a problem. We're in the middle of filming a couple tutorials here, one on guide coats and one on this cool project that I'm working on where I'm using Oxford High Build White Primer uh, and the Daphne Blue to do a burst as part of a custom job. I'm about to take some B-roll footage on the phone and you guys can see how I put that together. I'll film myself actually doing it. One of the keys with B-roll is you want it to be nice and steady, so it's better if you can film it in a higher frame rate. So I guess that takes me to the obvious next question. And again, we're not going to cover shutter speeds, ISO, all of that in this video because I'm talking about filming with your phone. So all I really need to say is make sure the place is well lit so your video doesn't come out grainy. Simple as that. But frame rates are important and your phone gives you some options. Your average video, what we see, is typically 27 frames a second. So let's say 30 frames a second. And your phone has a 24 and a 30 option. 30 frames a second is normal speed. If you film at 60 frames a second, it's twice as many. So you gamers will know this. It's a faster refresh rate. For the purpose of a video, what it means is I can slow my video down to 50% speed and still have it look normal, have it look smooth. So it'll slow down, but it won't look choppy. If you're filming at 30 frames a second and you slow it down to half speed, well then you end up with a situation where your video looks kind of jumpy because you're not capturing enough frames. Your phone also has slow-mo mode, likely, mine does, and it's got 120 and 240. 240 is great if you're filming a hummingbird, um, but you're probably not. So 120 allows you to slow things down to 25% speed. That's very slow motion. We'll take a quick shot of that when I'm spraying. Uh, but yeah, it's very slow. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. When you do that, it's going to automatically load into your video software in slow motion, and then you can speed it up if you want. When you film in 60, your camera, your phone, considers it to be normal. So it's going to film in normal, and then you can slow it down if you want. I hope that all made sense. So with that in mind, I'm going to throw this thing into 60 frames a second, put it in my hands, old person style, and uh, yeah, let's take some B-roll. All right, let's get some action shots and B-roll going here. I'm filming myself filming like a, like a weirdo. Um, so there you can see what this looks like in the 60 frames per second. And then here's what it looks like when I slow it down to 50%. You can see how much smoother that looks. It's pretty easy to hold it by hand. These new phones are relatively well stabilized. It looks good. So you just got to be careful. Uh, you're going to see I, I have a look of pure concentration on my face as I slowly move using my entire body instead of just my arms. I'm just trying to keep myself steady. That's all. And, uh, and you get used to it after a little bit, but it's really not that difficult. It's actually considerably easier with a phone than it is with a lot of cameras. On cameras, oddly enough, uh, you kind of want them heavier because that makes them easier to control because of the way the weight is distributed. But on a phone, pretty straightforward. You know, you just hold your phone steady. A lot of you guys are probably used to filming stuff or taking pictures with your phone anyway. And this is what you can do when you uh, play around with the speeds a little bit. Slow it down, speed it up. All of the video editing software can do it, so we'll talk about that after. I've got this little kind of setup that I've got for on the table here. Um, it's basically just a couple of really cheap components hacked together to hold a phone. Like I said, I'll, I'll put a couple items in my Amazon link there if you're looking for something like this. It's pretty easy to find. 
something now that will hold the phone. They've actually become a lot more popular even since I picked this stuff up. But the key is you do want to be able to kind of put the phone in a few different places or put whatever camera you're using in a few different places really helps out. Having something like this, oddly enough, even though it adds weight, you can see it, uh, it actually kind of makes it easier to get a nice steady footage as well. Having a gimbal is even better, but they're, they're expensive, even for phones. So just setting up your phone on the table gives you some really cool angles and you can get some, some really interesting footage that way that really helps make your videos kind of easier to watch, more entertaining, and it keeps people engaged for longer. Any of you guys who are thinking of doing videos more often after this, these kind of things will help. Here I am filming myself filming again, but check this out. This is the slow motion. This is 120 frames per second. This is why I say you probably don't want to go any uh, any slower than that. The 240 is pretty ridiculous, but this looks pretty cool, if you ask me. I think I'm going to incorporate this kind of thing into my footage more often. My actual camera, my Nikon that I've been using, it doesn't take this. Uh, it can't do 120 frames a second. It only does 60 so I really only use it to get steadier b-roll but here I can get these slow motion action shots yeah your phone gives interesting footage for sure uh, this is actually a, a much longer clip than it needs to be more so because I'm enjoying it than because it's actually useful but look at that I'm gonna use that on on router footage and stuff next but uh, yeah there you go 120 frames a second now I'm going to film the next code at normal speed but in 4K because I have that option and if you've got the right editing software what you can do for this because 4K is huge is reframe it and then move over the course of the footage and give yourself this cool fake camera movement. Pretty nifty. Alright so now that we're done kind of the practical demo piece let's talk about what you need in terms of editing. First of all just as one last practical example here you can do kind of low light shots with a decent phone camera not great ones but you can see in here my main light in this room is off i've got a desk light over here it's pretty bright uh one in the back to light up the rest of the room a little bit so it doesn't look like i'm a total creep and that thing for effect so you don't need a ton of light but you do need some brightness i haven't checked yet but i think you're going to notice that this portion of the video might be a little grainier than the others but yeah you can still do this kind of stuff with your phone no problem I don't have a good way to change the angle here, so I'm going to change where I am. Anyway, uh, in terms of editing software, I know this is a big kind of intimidating piece for a lot of people, but I did the first several years of my editing just using iMovie, which was free on my laptop. I used a Mac um, because I don't actually know how to use a computer. So that was the logical choice for me. But there's also free editing software on PCs, as far as I know, and you can use those as well. No problems. If you're going to do that, color grading is a little harder and color grading can be kind of complicated anyway. So just use the standard settings on your phone, the automatic mode. It works fine. You can tweak it a little bit. You can do that in iMovie. You can do that in whatever you want. Um, but you don't really need to. And you're going to be able to get a passable video like that. Like I said, I used iMovie. I used a camcorder. It was a piece of junk for a long time. I can do much better than that on my phone now with the same software and then if you get a little bit more accustomed to the software you can do a whole bunch of stuff there are tons of great tutorials out there I'm not going to purport to try and make one of those um, but I will show you I'm using the HDR mode which is like a flat profile on my phone flat profiles are how you get more dynamic range how you get better quality video so I'll show you what that looks like with no color grading right now not great right and then with color grading obviously you can see kind of what we're dealing with um, you can also if you don't have a computer <laughs> if you have uh, a good phone or an iPad for example it's a lot easier on an iPad um, you can get LumaFusion which is a paid app so it does cost money but it doesn't cost as much money as a computer so if you get LumaFusion that allows you to do some actually pretty decent video editing it's probably a more it's actually a much more powerful app I would say than iMovie uh, so you can learn how to use that again I'm not going to make a tutorial on that I'm no expert on video making or video editing just giving you guys the basics and you can do a lot of that stuff just using the standard free software just cut it together very simple stuff all right guys I think that's about it that's how to make a video entirely with your phone you can use that to make your great guitar build off videos I made a video last year for the unofficial competitors as well uh, about making videos so that should also provide some useful information if you're at all interested feel free to go check that out 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it helpful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And remember to subscribe uh, so you can see my actual guitar build off build because I'm doing it and it's going to be cool. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Hope you liked it. Have a good one and I will see you next time.